So now let's take a look at the actual circuit. So here we all obviously have our Arduino, and then we have the three parts. We have the sender, the receiver, and the screen. So the center is easy to recognize. It's the one with the LED to send the uh, Morse code. The receiver is the one with the photoresistor to receive the code. And the screen, well, the screen is rather obviously the screen. So now let's take it apart and we're gonna build it together. So now let's do the exciting part. We're gonna build it back up. So. Um, the first thing we're going to do is build a sender. So this is the diagram we're going to use. The first thing is D12, going to an LED, going to resistor, going to ground. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take a jumper wire, connect it to D12. So on your Arduino, you have two sides, one that says analog and power, and the other one that says digital. That's the one that we're interested in. So you see all the ports from 0 to 13. So we're going to use the one that says 12. That's a D12. The next step is connecting it to the LED. Now, the problem is we can easily connect those two things together. That's why we're going to use the breadboard. So we're going to take our little jumper cable, that's D12, and connect it somewhere on the breadboard. Now, the next step is connecting the LED. So on an LED, there's a very important thing to notice. Uh, you already have seen the video where we blow them up. Um, to not do that again, you need to pay attention to the length of the legs. One is longer than the other, as you can see here. The longest one means that it needs to be connected to power. The shortest one needs to go towards the ground. Now, in our case, it means this. It means that the, the, that, that one will be connected to the resistor to the ground. So this one will go to D12, this one to the resistor. So let's connect it. I'm gonna make sure it's the long leg that's connected on the same line as we explained on how the breadboards work. And well, it's giving me a little bit of a hard time. There we go. So the long leg is on the same line as D12, meaning they're connected. Now what's next? We need to connect the other side of the LED to the resistor. So the other side of the LED is on this line. So I can connect it anywhere on that line because as you've seen, well, they're all connected together. So I'm going to put it here and I'm going to connect the other side anywhere else on the breadboard. There we go. So now we have D12 to the long leg of the LED and the short leg of the LED to the resistor here. Now the last thing we need to do is connect ground. So to connect ground, I'm going to take another jumper cable and I'm going to locate ground on the Arduino itself. You actually have several options. There's two of them and they're easily recognizable because they're highlighted white. Uh, it says GND, that stands for ground. So you have two of them on the power side, but you have one that's conveniently next to our 12 that's right here. It says GND. So let's use that one for this. So we connect to ground and then we're back to our circuit and we connect to the other end of the resistor. And now we have completed the sender, D12 to the LED, to the resistor, to ground. So now let's look at the receiver. We're gonna first find power and provide it to the photoresistor. And then we're gonna connect it to the resistor and then to ground. We are also going to connect A1, analog one, in, in the middle of the photoresistor and the resistor, that will allow us to read the value of the photoresistor. So to do this, we're gonna take one of our jumper cables and locate five volt. So it's easily um, placed in the power section of the Arduino on this side. So five volt is right there. So I'm gonna connect it here. Please also notice that there's 3.3 volt on the board if you need, if you ever need it. So now for convenience, again, we're gonna use a breadboard. So connect it anywhere on the breadboard, like so. So the next step is plugging the photoresistor. Now, the photoresistor doesn't have any polarity like the LED. So any leg works as long as it goes through it. 
So it doesn't matter which way you connect it. That's pretty convenient, isn't it? So we're gonna take any of the leg and make sure it's connected on the same side as our jumper cable. So as you can see, we have the jumper cable coming from five volt going to the leg, to this leg of the photoresistor and we can continue our circuit. So what's next? We have a resistor that's connected to it. And well, let's connect it. So we take the resistor, same thing. We, it doesn't matter which side you connect. They're, they're both the same, there's no polarity. So we're gonna connect it to the same line as, oops, we're gonna connect it to the same line as, just wanna get in, there we go. Um, to the same line as the photoresistor. And now we're completing, we're moving with our, our circuit. We have five volt going to the photoresistor, going to the resistor, and now we're here. So where does that connect to? Well, to ground. So we take another, uh, another jumper cable, and by now you should know how to locate ground. It's fairly easy, They're highlighted white. So we're gonna take the one that's right next to five volt and connect it to our resistor. And there it is, simple enough. Now, please remember, we haven't connected A1 yet. So right now we can't read the value of this photoresistor. So we do need to do this. So how does this work? Well, it's pretty simple. Well, one side is on A1, so let's locate A1. It's on the analog in section, and as you can see, it's labeled A1. So let's get in there. And now on the other side, on the, on the diagram, what you see is you need to connect it between the photoresistor and the resistor. So what does, what does it look like in real life? Well, in real life, it means connecting anywhere on the same line as that connection between the photoresistor and the resistor. In my case, right here. As long as it's on the same line, we'll be fine. And we have done the receiver. Now the last part that we need to uh, take care of is the screen. So as you can see, the screen has four pins to it. You can read the labels if you want that says uh, ground, VCC, SDA, and SCL. You might not see them great on the video, but you can take, you can take a look at yours and see them. So where do, where do they connect? These are very simple, straight connections to the Arduino. So ground will go to ground, VCC will go to five volt because both of them mean power in our case. SDA means serial data, so it's gonna go to A4. And SCL means serial clock, it's gonna go to A5. So let's do that. We take a jumper cable and we'll start with the first one. So in our case, ground. So I connected in the first one, it says ground, and well, shockingly enough, I need to connect it to ground on the Arduino. We already know where to locate them. They're highlighted white. So we're gonna use the last one that's available on our Arduino board. That's done. Now the next one, we're gonna connect to VCC, like so. So where, where are we going to find five volt on the board? Now, if you look at the Arduino itself, you can notice that the five volt is already busy with our receiver. So where can we find five volt? Well, there's a couple of ways to do this. Either you can turn one of those pins on and make sure it provides you power, but that's a little complicated. What we can do is we already know that we have power on this board. Here, we have the five volt going all the way to the receiver. Well, if we connect here, it's exactly the same as, oh boy, it doesn't wanna get in, hold on. Um, um, there we go, it gave me a little hard time here. So if we connect here, it's the same as being connected directly in the five volt. 5 volt is here, and that's our VCC from the screen. So see how they're just one uh, next to one another? That's how we grab power in our case. Now the next step is SDA and SCL. So we're gonna grab the screen again, connect to the next one, which is SDA. 
and we're going to need to connect it to A4. So on the Arduino, A4 is an analog port, so we're going to put it over here. So you might wonder why A4? Well, turns out that this screen uses a special kind of communication that's only available, and that's not written here, but it's only available on those two ports. It's, it's a serial communication. That's A4 and A5 on this board. And you can find them on the, the documentation of the Arduino. But in our case, we already know that it's A4 and A5. So let's connect the, the next one, SCL, and go to A5. There we go. And that is your completed transceiver. You should have the sender, the receiver, and the screen.